Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. You get fairy dust. I get fairy dust. Amelie gets fairy dust. <gasps> Hermione's wand. Okay. Welcome to another this codependent no more melody Beatty. um don't forget to subscribe <laughs> this is what the second time i said it <laughs> um hit the notification bell if you want to know when a bitch is gonna talk to you about hard shit um anyway and have you noticed this like my youtube channel is like the youtube channel circa uh, 2010 like it's Oh, oh goodness, no bells, no whistles, just me, just an advanced bitch teaching you shit. Okay, we are on chapter four, codependency, codependency characteristics, and um, we're under poor communication. And I'm not talking about like, uh, some of us have communication degrees, not me, but some of you do. And I'm not talking about being a badass in the boardroom. I'm not talking about getting your shit done. I'm not talking about hashtag girl boss or any of that shit. I'm talking about interpersonally. When it's interpersonal, our communication skills go to hell in a handbasket. Um, and here's some shit we do. Codependents frequently lie to protect themselves. And so, uh, totally, I was always gonna come out smelling like a rose. I would do whatever it took to, to come out smelling like a rose. I didn't do bad shit, but I did, you know, like if I was mean to my sister, or if I snuck something that I wasn't supposed to, or, you know, I, I, you know, did you do that? Oh, n no. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, and if you think about this, like codependency comes from childhood trauma. And so we, getting in trouble was an explosion. We, we were not gonna get in trouble unless you're the scapegoat. But, you know, we will lie to protect ourselves and to protect the family from that explosion. Have a difficult time asserting their rights. What are rights? Like, I don't need those. Oh gosh, no, no, I don't, I'm good. Like, mm -mm, I don't need anything. You go ahead, like you do. Yeah, yeah, I don't need any rights. Like, what is that? Like, forget about it. That just didn't, doesn't exist. And again, if you can imagine growing up in childhood, like asserting our rights meant we were gonna get in really bad trouble. Like we were gonna be abused in some way. Um, or, or we would have, someone would have been cruel to us or mean to us, or there would have been an explosion have a difficult time expressing their emotions honestly, openly, and appropriately. Well, one of my top strengths is authenticity. And so I will cry openly and honestly. I would have despair openly and honestly. I would, you know, uh, be happy, you know, sometimes inauthentically, but you know, honestly, it was safe to be happy, you know, if I was happy about something um that was allowed <laughs> that i was allowed to be happy about then we were you know we're fine but anger oh no 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 anger no anger no uh really even feelings of being hurt um maybe if we were hurt by somebody outside the family but inside the family it's not maybe siblings was fine but um no 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 and and so it's hard once you enter a real relationship with another human being um, to begin this process. Like, I am angry about that. I feel this about that. Um, have a difficult, we already did that. The most, um, think most of what they have to say is unimportant. Yeah, we don't, we're not, our ideas are dumb. You know, we don't, we don't need that. Um, again, you may find areas in your life where you did put your ideas out there and it was totally fine. Like you, you're good at that again, like at, at work or, um, somewhere else, but just on a daily basis to everyone, like it, it's like most of what I have to say is super, super, super unimportant. And it's making me realize, cause I didn't really ever like raise my hand in class unless class participation was part of the grade. Um, cause I needed those A's, you know, that I, that I truly thought my thoughts were unimportant. Like I really, I really did. So that kind of mixed up with my codependency of not expressing myself, not expressing my opinions or thoughts. Um, and 
think most of what I have to say is unimportant makes us really good at being chameleons. So we can, you know, I could jibe with this group, vibe with that group, do this with the other group without ever revealing my personal opinions or what I thought on the situation or who I was supporting politically or whatever. Like, no, 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 no. And also like what my ideas were about the shit we were reading in school. No one needs to, your thoughts are dumb. That's what I thought. Um, begin to talk in cynical, self-degrading or hostile ways. We've all, uh, you know, been that way to ourselves. Uh, just, I'll never get better. It's never good enough. It's, I'll never, I'll never get what I want. You know, love is, is a joke, is a, is a, you know, cosmic joke. Uh, just any of that stuff, self-degrading, I'm a piece of shit, I'm, you know, what do I know, like constantly, um, or even hostile ways. That's not me, but some people do it, do that host hostily. Hostily? Do it in hostile ways. Hostily. <laughs> apologize, oh bitch, apologize for bothering people. I, um, when I was a flight attendant, very brief stint when I was in my early 20s, um, I remember very distinctly, because I was like the low man on the totem pole, totem pole and like so I got, um, you know, they treated you like shit, because uh, that, you know, working for an airline is all seniority based and all. And I distinctly remember someone stepping on my toe really hard. You know, we're in these close quarters and I stepped on it really, really, it was an accident, but still. And I apologize for having my foot under their toe. No, my toe under their foot, I apologized. And so when I read Pete Walker's book and he has, a, he, he, there's a chapter where he talks about he apologized to a chair and I'm like, I love this man. I, I know I have apologized to inanimate objects, 100%. So um, I don't want to, and that's one of my main things, my main things is I don't want to bother anybody. I don't want, you don't, I'm sorry. Like again, sorry for existing. Like, I don't want to be a bother to anybody. I don't want anybody to go out of their way for me. I'd rather, you know, poke a, poke a fork in my eye than have anybody, you know, do anything for me. So, I, um, I'm, I'm, it's such a different life. You have to heal this codependency. If you, if you haven't figured that out by now, let me be here to tell you. You're doing it. Like, you're gonna do it. You've got to heal from this. We have to change. Part of being human and being in relationship is to bother each other sometimes. We have to bother each other sometimes. Sometimes I have to ask my husband to do something that doesn't, he doesn't like and vice versa. Although I will confess, he would, okay, movies, what are those? We don't have those anymore, but he, if he knew I hated a movie, like whatever, like trans, he wouldn't go see Transformers, but some, some movie that is, you know, beyond, um, like murder every five minutes. Like I, I don't, I like Marvel movies and I like, I love all that shit because all the heroes journey, I love it. Um, I just don't, the fighting, I can't, like it just it bores me, like I can't. And so, <laughs> So if, um, if it's, so if it's somewhere between, you know, something along those lines, or sometimes he likes some weird shit, some like off like in, indie shit, like I can't, I can't. Um, Cause it'll make me feel like shit all day long. So I can't, um, he has no problem wanting me to go with him when I, when I don't want to. Like he wants to be with me more than, I mean, it doesn't, my point is, <laughs> is that it doesn't bother him. It doesn't bother him at all to put me out a little bit at all. It was shocking to me, but vice versa, if I wanted him to go see a movie that I wanna see that's more, you know, whatever, not really that much of a big of a fan of a chick flick, but let's say I read a book or something and I wanted to go see it, or if it was something, you know, we saw a trailer for and it looked, you know, looked sweet or whatever. 
I don't want him to come with me. I don't, I don't, like, why? Like, no, this is what I'm gonna see with a friend or see by myself or wait till it comes on Netflix or whatever the fuck. Like, it would never occur to me. And, and, it, and it took me a minute to understand that what he was doing was normal. Now, I still get to set, set my boundary and say, no, thank you. <laughs> and, you know, acquiescing, you know, every once and again where it's not going to upset me or hurt me, but I want to, you know, we get, part of being in a relationship is we get to do shit for each other. Sometimes we have to do shit for each other that we don't want to do, but we do because we're in a relationship. And sometimes he has to do something for me that he doesn't want to do. But it took me a really long time to get to that place where I could let him. But even still, it's just like just the, his dread and like, ugh, getting out the door. Like, I just don't want to deal with any of it, you know? And so, um, <laughs> he's really wonderful, by the way, just in case you get an inkling. Like, he's, he's everything. He's, he does treat me like a queen, so. Um, <laughs> except when he wants me to go see a movie I don't want to see. Um, the reason I'm mentioning all that is because that's normal. Like he's doing the normal thing. I'm doing the abnormal thing. Like, oh, don't worry about me. Don't. I used to do this stupid shit with my kids. Like, oh, you don't need to get me anything for Mother's Day. It's just a made up holiday or some shit like that. <laughs> I'm better than, I'm better now. And I'm like, um, if they want to do something for Mother's Day, I completely accept it. But I, you know, fucked that up for myself because I didn't want to bother them. What, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> I get to be celebrated one day out of the year. What's, what's that about? Um, anyway, I hope that's helpful. You know, how you know how healthy your relationship is, is reciprocity, is reciprocity. And it's part of my work to sometimes be a bother to people. And when they bother to help me because they want to, because they love me, my one and only job is to say thank you, not to scheme on how I'm gonna repay them triple fold, tenfold for this kindness, but to say thank you and accept it into my heart. And when you first start doing that, that will be uncomfortable and you won't like it. But that is what it has to be now. When people wanna give you something or go to a little trouble for you, you practice and say thank you. Thank you. And then go to your therapist and tell her how hard that was. <laughs> um, I hope that's helpful. I love you so much. Oh, Codependence Unite. Re Codependence and Recovery Unite. Love you. We're getting better every day. Bye.